three. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning into How We Built Now Canada, the Proco original web series where we have candid conversations with the brightest minds in Canadian construction. It also becomes an incredible way for our viewers to tap into the experience of your peers. I'm your host today, Fazal. I'm a strategic product consultant with Procore. And this is a very special episode as we celebrate all the incredible fearless women in construction for Women in Construction Week and the past International Women's Day. So let's have the conversation that will continue to break down barriers and empower more women to succeed in construction. With me, I do have two amazing panelists, Maria and Kayla, and I'll have them quickly introduce themselves. Maria? Hi, I'm Maria Andonofsky, and I am the Director of Operational Excellence at Bentel Green Oak. Kayla? Hi, I'm Kayla Gervais. I am the secretary for the Manitoba Women in Construction Steering Committee. And as well, I'm a project coordinator at Boxstall Construction in Winnipeg. Awesome. Thanks for joining, ladies. Um, so before we dive into our questions, I did want to just break the ice and ask you, what is the one or maybe two songs that make you feel empowered? And why does it make you feel this way? So Maria, if you no, want- No, Kayla, you go first. I need to think oh. about this one. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't on the list, guys. Um, <laughs> hmm. No, I don't know. That's a tough one. Well, I think I'd say I will survive. That that one uh, that one rings in my head. Oh, Gloria! Yes, <laughs> that's the same. That is my go-to song. Yeah. Um, and I remember I was working out once. I think this was <laughs> a while ago, maybe fifteen years ago, and I was listening to it. And it just every time I listen to it, it gives me so much power and so much strength. So mm -hmm. that's definitely my song as well. <laughs> There's another one that I, I really yeah. love and it's it's by Carrie Underwood. Um, it's called Champion. And yeah. if you listen to the, those words, I think those would resonate with a lot of the women in this industry for sure. Absolutely. We should actually create a, maybe a, play a playlist. Yeah. In construction on Spotify. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you for sharing that. So um, now again, one question that I did want to ask um, you both is, um, especially for our viewers to get to know you and the path you took into this career, was construction a conscious choice or did you fall into it by accident? So Kayla, if you want to go ahead. Sure. Um... So coming out of high school, I it wasn't the clear choice for me. I dabbled in a couple of other things. Um, I really liked, of those things I tried, I really loved the team atmosphere. Um, and growing up, we were always flipping houses with my parents. So constant construction, I lived in it my whole life. Um, I always say that like the background noise of a table saw going off is just like so calming for me because um, <laughs> that's what I grew up with. But I loved the intricacies of construction. I loved how it was always changing. And so after trying a couple of other things, I went into um, the civil engineering program, uh, civil engineering technology diploma program at Red River College here in Manitoba. I awesome. got through that program in three years and then continued on and now have a degree in construction management that I'm using in my project coordinator role. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Maria? Um, I would say it was subconscious because similar to Kayla, my dad had a side uh, small construction business, kind of like a side hustle. He had his day job, but then after work, he'd come home and we'd be doing the second job. So um, I come from a background of Eastern European parents who, you know, are very hardworking and um, the company did, um, you know, just small jobs like painting, landscaping, also handyman work, you know, finishing basements and things like that. So I would always go and help. So I got a taste for it back then. But then um, 
when I started into my career as a facility manager, we started doing projects for a lot of our clients. And uh, my client at that time was uh, the provincial government in Ontario. Um, so I got a little bit of taste from that. And then one of the ministries uh, liked, you know, how I manage the projects and things like that. So I jumped over to them to manage their multi-million dollar projects. Um, and so um, I have to say, like, I'm in operations now, but I really loved being out in the field, um, you know, looking at the construction work being done, working with those teams to see, you know, um, you know, from the beginning right to the end and, exactly. and having something completed. Um, it's satisfying to see things like that. So um, I quite enjoyed it. And that's, I would say that that's where my love for construction came from. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm the same. I love going from kind of the conception to when it's getting built and all the hard work that goes into it. It's very satisfying to see your project come together. What's as if it's my baby. And I'm like, oh, look, it's growing. And it's awesome. Great. So I do want to share some statistic with you that will then discuss them and I wanna see where you stand and what do you think of those. So Canada consistently leads the world um, out doing all other G7 nations in equality at work. So we're already in a good place, but the data on women in construction tells a different story. Um, only 17% of construction jobs go to women. So that's behind agriculture, fishing, and hunting. And these data are from Statistic Canada, which conducts labor force surveys. Now, when we're talking about off-site roles, such as archi architecture, um, engineering, administrative work, female workers are much better represented. Build force data shows that women were employed in 41% of the total off-site Canadian construction jobs in 2019. So even though we're heading into the right direction, women are still outnumbered on work sites. In 2019, the number of women working on construction projects increased to 4.7%, and trades women make up around 6% of on-site staff in Alberta, BC, but as you move towards the East Coast, so Quebec, New Brunswick, it drops down to 3%. So as you hear these stats, it's obvious that we are, um, you know, 41% in um, the offices, but a very low number on the fields. And I wanted to know, um, how does this align to your experience in the industry um, and where, where are your hopes around these numbers? So Maria, if you wanna go ahead and... Well, um, construction is definitely a male dominated industry and there's several factors that contribute to that, to the enormous gender gap. And, and a lot of that is gender bias, you know, women in construction and, you know, sort of, um, this, I wouldn't say it's a stigmatism, but how, you know, women are viewed that are working in construction. Um, I think that that perception is changing a little bit over time now. Um, but, you know, working with women in the construction industry, um, I've mostly seen them in, like you said, an office uh, type situations, whether it's project management or interior design, move services. Um, you know, there's been, I've been lucky enough to know uh, some, women, some women in leadership that I've had the pleasure of working with over time. Um, but I think that those roles need to be more represented because, um, you know, it's great to have male mentors in the industry, but it's even better to have, you know, woman to woman mentor so oh, that you can, yeah, so nice. that you can see it from their perspective. Um, you know, um, we look at things differently. I mean, it, that's just the way that it is. And uh, there's no right way or wrong way, but um, exactly. There might be, and we'll probably get into this later, but like from a mentorship standpoint, I think it's beneficial to have one from each side, you know, like an you know. ally, but also a female mentor that can kind of share the same experiences and listen, learn. I think that's, that's where I feel the most connected when I speak to um, female uh, mentors. Absolutely. How about you, Kayla? Hearing those statistics. Um, it definitely, that's what you see on site. That's pretty much what I see in the office. Um, I sought out my employer being Boxstall Construction for having other females in, in the office on their sites. 
I think that's important for women to know that they're accepted into the industry they're heading into, into the company that they're working for. Um, I think we're making progress, but I definitely agree with those statistics that you noted. Um, like Maria and I said, we got into construction because we saw it. And something that my Manitoba Women in Construction group does is we provide an event for grades four through six um, girls in school that lets them try out the trades because some other statistics show that if you don't open up construction or any of the trades as an option to these girls before they get to a certain age, they've already said, this isn't, this isn't an option for me. This is still the old, old boys club. Um, so we're letting them try things and also teaching them that these are, these are fantastic careers. Um, you, you, can grow up, support yourself, um, work full time. Um, it's really, it's really, really a fantastic, fantastic career to get into. Um, Absolutely. Um, and Kella, have you ever been based on a site project or you know, you were on the field? Did you ever have, if you want to share some of your experiences on that? Sure. So uh, normally I am in the field. My awesome. current role, yeah, I'm like part field coordinator, part project coordinator. Um, usually hard hat, safety glasses. Now boots it's on a the hat too. You've got your high vis on. It absolutely boots on the ground. Um, and I love running into women in the field, whether they're electricians or HVAC technicians or carpenters. Um, it's quite the connection that you feel to these other women. And it's amazing. We get used to the imbalance, I think, working in that industry and being boots on the ground. Um, but it's the connection just isn't the same when you're working amongst all male peers. And as well, something that I've noted over the past few years is that your male coworkers really appreciate the balance as well. Um, it's not just women looking for women. It's it's everybody looking for a balance because it's rare that you head outside of your construction site and find such an imbalance in the rest of the world. So I think it's just, it's comforting for everyone. That's such a great <laughs> response that you yeah. uh, I worked on a job site for around two years and my experience was a bit more challenging. Um, I think we were a few women and we were just, our office was based, it was a hospital project. So we were, um, we were only a few, I think, a handful in, uh, in that project. And the experience was challenging, very intimidating. And um, again, I was much kind of newer to this whole construction industry. So I didn't know how to act. Um, do I try to mimic my male um, peers or do I just stay as who I am? So I think uh, hearing that you had a good, positive, supportive um, experience, it's very, very optimistic. <laughs> it's been 10 years since I've been out in the field, um, and I had similar experiences to you, Gazelle. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was challenging. I was one of the very few women on the construction floor, um, you know, and there's there's certain things that you have to deal with, you know, um, um, that you, you probably don't have to deal with today. So, um, mm. but it, I mean, I found that if you knew what you were talking about, you had a seat at the table um, yes. and if you weren't just speaking to speak, you know, um, because then they do dismiss you. And um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I made sure that when I was sitting at that table with, you know, the various- You were ready. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I had all yeah. of my information. Exactly. I spoke to people, I did my research. Um, yeah. yeah, women can make which, it in this industry Which too. is great because it makes you, you know, do your due diligence and just be ready and um, speak up. Um, but at the same time, I always felt that there was a lot of pressure on me because it, it did um, put me in a position where I was doubting myself. I'm like, should I say this? There's too many men sitting here. Are they judging me? And that I think later on, I did have a female mentor who said, you know what, you just got to trust yourself, speak up, you do it once, twice, and then that's it. Absolutely. So awesome. Perfect. And um, now I do want to ask another question is we, and I think you touched on uh, that quickly, Kayla, is 
where these networking events where we reach out in schools and we try to get more female to participate in events. But one of the obstacles that we still face today is how to break into informal networks, especially if you're still in school considering construction as a career um, choice. How do we get, or even if you are part of your um, career, you wanna grow, how do you access to influential colleagues and mentors and um, what are you know the current uh, networking events that are hosted by a lot of the construction companies are sporting events, golfing, where our male peers are engaged. Um, do we try to pave new path or do we try to socialize with our peers? And Demory, I'm gonna let you start with that one. Okay, so I think that that's a two part question. So uh, let me tackle the first one. So um, discussion panels such as these ones are a great way or great first steps for women's voices to be heard um, on the construction platform. Um, some of the areas that I hope to see change and advancement in the industry is to see more women in leadership, as I had mentioned earlier, and in construction so that there isn't such a divide when it comes to the social and networking piece. Um, you know, maybe today we can inspire more women to break down the stereotypical barriers in the industry yes. by, by taking part in events such as this. Um, I did notice though, like from, you know, the events that, that are currently in place, like whether it's golfing or sporting events, more women are getting invited to those events. So I don't know, um, you know, that we need to trailblaze something new, but, you know, it might be also a good idea to, you know, try and start new types of events yeah, yeah. that would capture the interest of both, you know, both males and females and things like that. But I am finding that um, it's not as one-sided as it used to be. Um, so that that's good. That's a step in the right direction. Absolutely. How about you, Kayla? I would agree with Maria. I think that you see more wine and cheese uh, events taking place, which um, I myself enjoy um, some of the more male dominated sports and things like that, but I'm not a golfer. Um, so that one I often pass on. Um, but so I really appreciate when they do try to have a balance of events for networking or professional development. Um, and the other part of your question, I think was about informal networks and gaining access to those. And I think there's, um, there's still a bit of, um, Get, getting thrown into the industry and sinking or swimming in construction. So you get dropped in and it's a little bit of find your way. I think the industry could do better at yeah. setting up formal mentoring and formal, um, yeah, formal mentoring opportunities for women and younger, younger men heading into the industry as well. I think a lot of, in the past, we learned from our parents and our grandparents, a lot of these trades, whether you were a Mason or a carpenter, and that's kind of established this while well, you walk in and you already know what you're doing because you've had experience somewhere. Well, we're, we're starting to teach the younger generation um, about construction using VR headsets. Um, so I think that I think it's time that we set up a little bit more formal networking and mentoring channels just to allow everyone to um, to expand their skills and to talk to other people that have that experience in industry that, that you might not have yet. Absolutely. And I think we always focus on, you know, just kind of on the female side, but educating our male peers, the younger uh, ones as they're starting, that's as important because they can be you know future mentors and they can be your future colleagues and it really does go a long way and that brings me to our first question which is uh, we again hear the world's allies and mentors discuss quite a bit a bit and what does a good ally and mentor mean to you um, who would you identify as the key ally and mentor in your career so Kayla, if you want to go ahead. Sure. Um, as I mentioned, I'm the secretary on the Manitoba Women in Construction Steering Committee. I joined that board when I was in my second year of post-secondary school. Um, I remember sitting in my second year drafting class and thinking to myself, like, why don't I ever see women in these articles um, in the leadership positions in management? 
in construction. So I did a quick Google search and quickly found that uh, we had we were starting up a committee, a steering committee in Manitoba. And I said, I don't know if I can help, but this looks like what I'm looking for. It's a bunch of women that are in leadership positions, trying to grow the industry, trying to support women um, within the industry and retain women as well. Because I know bringing women to the industry is one thing, retaining them is another. Um, so those have been those have been my best mentors. I was fortunate enough to connect with these women um, while I was in school. They helped um, they helped bring me into the industry, and I got to sit around a table and hear their stories of the hurdles that they had been able to overcome and some of the um, points in their careers where they might have tripped but got back up. Um, and that was. I was really fortunate to find them at the time that I did. Um, and I'm really fortunate to be able to sit on panels like this today and share that experience in hopes that other young people are able to, to reach out and find, find a similar network. Nice. And Maria, how, how was your experience? Have you had any kind of key allies or mentor who really helped you and guided you towards your growth? I have um, a good ally and a mentor. It can be this, the key to someone's success, right? Yeah. So it's important to find an ally or a mentor that act truly believes in you and wants to help you succeed and will give you the proper guidance to improve your skill sets. So uh, trust is paramount. I think you really need to trust who that mentor is because not everybody out there um, wants to see you succeed. Yeah, so, unfortunately. Um, you know, it's, I know it's, it's, it is unfortunate, but yeah, so you have to seek those people out. Um, and assuming there are qualified people to choose from, I would definitely select, um, as I had mentioned before, a male and a female um, to get both, both perspectives. Um, and I, and I've kind of seeked out people in the past that didn't initially believe in me, but I saw how successful they were. So I kind of kept at it and uh, kept asking the questions and kept asking for guidance. And then you kind of become endearing to that person. So they have no choice, but to help you. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> but um, I've been lucky enough to have one male and two female mentors throughout my career who I still keep in contact with. Um, and, and it's been years since I've worked with them. Um, and, you know, and the fruits of their labor have also become mine too, because seeing me succeed, they planted the seeds to help get me there. So it makes them happy to see where I am at my, in my career as well. Um, so, and those people told me the cold, hard truths that, you know, I may or may not have wanted to hear um, to help me grow. And then they've also helped fine tune the areas that I was really good at that just needed tweaking. So that's super important to have those people in your life. And I think often uh, one of the challenges we face looking for a mentor is we don't know how to ask and we don't know who to ask. And one thing I've learned, and this is just, um, you don't necessarily maybe need to have one mentor. You can admire someone and how they have a good work ethic or how they started and slowly grow. And you can just reach out observe them and that can be a long distance mentorship and to me that's always kind of gives you more option um, as we change as we grow and I think that's always another good approach um, to get the help you need. Definitely I think if I can add to that I think absolutely you're right there's so many forms of mentorship out there um, watching one of these panel discussions like Maria mentioned it's fantastic yeah. Um, but finding that person that will be honest with you, sometimes, sometimes it's comforting to hear someone else um, tell you about your own strengths and weaknesses and what they think those are. And that's a discussion that's okay to have about what your Absolutely. strengths and weaknesses are and how to play on those with your mentor. So I think discussions like that are really important, but it comes with the, with the trust that Maria mentioned. Yeah, and being yeah. able to have that mindset of receiving constructive feedback, I think yeah. um, it's, I, at least for me, it has been kind of a key to um, learn because initially when I started, I remember I was a bit more emotional of receiving feedback and <laughs> going, hey, should I, <laughs> am I doing this the right way? And now I've really learned to listen, hear, and grow. And I think that applies in every aspect of our lives, but 
especially when you're focusing on your career. Um, that's def- and we can learn from everyone, right? There's something you can learn from anyone that comes uh, and you meet. Absolutely. And I would just add that, like, especially for the millennials, um, to do take that constructive feedback. Because like you said, um, back in the day when I would get constructive feedback, you take it personal, but it's not personal. It's to help you grow. Um, And that's how, you know, um, new people coming into the industry, young females um, should really um, take to heart what's being said and, and just build on that. Yeah. Um, And one thing that I do want to share with our viewers is recently um, I spoke with a, with a coach who's helping me ask the right questions. And um, one thing he did mention was often female tend to go and say, how did I do? Was this good? And these are very general questions and it, and whoever you're asking, all they can say, it's like, yes, you did good or "Eh, next time, good luck. But narrowing down your questions and being more specific can help you and say, what do you think of this exact approach? Can I do it better? Are you, you know, is, and these are always uh, more helpful to just, um, you know, not just ask your mentor, how do I negotiate my salary or be very specific and that can be much more helpful. So I wanted to share that uh, with everyone as well. Great point. Um, so I started my, um, again, I went into engineering, I studied building engineering, worked in construction, I've always been on the project management side, worked for a GC um, on the field, and then eventually was an owner rep. Now, um, around two years ago, I joined the technology. So construction tech, it's booming, it's changing the world. And um, My question to you is, how do you see technology leveling the playing field for women and even other minority communities to be more visible and successful in construction? Um, I've noticed a huge impact in to my own career, but I wanted to see what are your thoughts around that as well? So Maria. Um, I think it, it's easier to speak about once you've jumped over into that industry, but I would say that having the appropriate technologies in place can provide women um, and other minorities a way to contribute, um, you know, through a, you know, flexible work hours, like we had talked about and uh, working from home, easy access to learning and development and and new ways to network as well. Um, I'm not sure if it, if it has a, part in leveling the playing field, but it certainly is strong in the field of construction itself. Absolutely. Um, And Kayla, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with the leveling the playing field. Um, um, I think we have an opportunity to test out um, new new experiences in construction. Like I mentioned before, like we're using now VR headsets to train people in different construction scenarios. Um, We're trying out simulations so people can head into um, a crane cab and see what that feels like without actually going through those years of training before they figure out that that's not for them. So there's some big opportunities with technology there. I agree that platforms like this um, like Procore is setting up now. Um, actually, those would potentially for sure have an, um, an ability to level the playing field. We're offering opportunities for women to discuss to discuss their successful careers in construction and any of the hurdles that they've had to, um, to go through. Um, and just the ability to reach new audiences. So even um, with a lot of platforms going virtual, I think there's a lot of people out there that haven't seen construction as a career option that now they're becoming exposed to it. You can find whatever information you want um, on that career and hopefully um, find someone who can take you on as a mentor or a mentee. Yeah, definitely. I think you can easily learn and apply what you learn and your knowledge And again, in times like COVID where we're almost all stuck at home, 
um, being able to use technology to communicate from, you know, you don't maybe need your boots to be really on the ground and it does help you to do your job successfully. So definitely, I think it's a new chapter um, in construction. So and having been on both sides of it, Gazelle, what, what have you seen? Like, how have you seen it leveling the playing field? I've, I've been truly... Uh, I think the mindset that I've noticed in construction, it's more open to females. Um, I've seen that percentage. I know we talked about 41% in construction, but I think it's a, there's a much bigger number that I've seen in technology. I, you know, before I joined a Procore, I've only had one female manager in the seven and a half years I was in construction where now I have a great manager who is more than a mentor to me. She's really a friend and if she's watching. Mm. <laughs> but, um, and that really changed the way I view things. I think before I tend, you know, it was kind of like female and then our allies, but now it's really, we're all one team and we're all helping and that openness and that, um, optimism and the support I've seen in construction tech for females, uh, it's definitely much more dominant and much more noticeable for me. That's great. Yeah. And um, Maria, as your, um, your director, and uh, so I'm sure you hire a lot of um, employees, I wanted to know what are the things that um, you know, you think HR teams can do better to attract top female talent. I know Kayla, you mentioned kind of these breakfast learning and with younger students. So they're just even aware that these jobs exist. Uh, but um, Maria, on your end, what are some of the things you wish HR did or that they're doing and they're being successful? Um, I think workshops and job fairs specifically geared towards skilled trades and women in construction would be really good, like recruiting from the colleges and universities. Um, that would definitely close the gap um, of, you know, how many men versus female get hired. Also, um, one of the things I'd like to see too, and I think that this still exists, is where um, the pay isn't the same for male and female. And so I would like to see, you know, that be on par. Um, you know, if a male gets hired for X role and a woman gets hired for X role, they get paid the same salary. Um, so I think that, again, Canada, for sure, I think is moving in that direction. Yeah. Um, so those are a couple of the areas. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's also important to say that when you're hiring for the role, that you're hiring, um, you know, for the skill set and not to sort of hit a quota. So whether it's yeah. male, female, it's got to be the right person for the job and they have to tick all so, the boxes, right? So, you know, if women or other minorities want to jump on that, then they need to get the skill set. They need to be prepared to compete and, you know, because the jobs are competitive out there and there is a lot of them. So um, if you want it, get ready and prepare yourself for them. Absolutely. And Kayla, how has, you know, I, as uh, kind of working with the Manitoba Women in Construction, do you think these, are there any efforts we're doing towards that goal? Definitely. We hold, um, we hold different um, professional development sessions based around topics like um, unconscious bias and dealing with different personality types on your job site, um, communication differences between men and women, educating yourself, whether it's your management of your company or your HR department in those items specifically can go, can go a huge way. I think there's just sometimes it's, a, it's an unconscious bias. It's not understanding the issues um, that face men and women differently. Um, and getting getting everybody educated on those things will definitely go a long way. I also think there's um, not even in the hiring process, but also in retaining women in the construction industry, we have a ways to go in um, being a little bit more flexible with our employees, um, whether that's not having everyone work the same 
10, 11 hour day. Construction is known for sometimes longer hours, some overtime, early mornings. If we're gonna let women into the construction industry and have them thrive, then we need to be a little bit more flexible. We need to maybe allow for, and men and women both, daycare pickups um, for someone in the family to stay home if a child is sick. Um, as a supervisor in construction, you're not always, you don't always have a backup ready. Um, yeah. So things like this that we can think of and women that become expecting in the field, your carpenters, your laborers, anyone have a plan for those people and discuss that with them. Let them know that they're supported in the ways that they need. I think that um, that as well will attract women to the industry and help retain. Those are all excellent points. Those are yeah, great. Yeah. really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why you just, up, I, I want to take notes. <laughs> Kayla, you're going places. <laughs> yes. There's a lot. There's a lot you don't think of with male female differences. I think, and when it comes to you know a female carpenter, you know she starts she she's expecting on your job site that changes things hugely. Um, lots of intricacies there that I think still need some kinks worked out. You might be the first female being hired by your company, um, but there's there's support out there. They can reach out to your local women in construction group. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, um, this is, we're kind of coming to an end. I don't want to end this conversation. I really want to stay on for hours. I, it's always a pleasure learning from other um, peers experiences but uh, we do have to say goodbye um, so again thank you both so much for joining today on how we built now Canada the Procore original web series and um, I wish you both wonderful times ahead and uh, yeah thanks for sharing your insight thank you so much of course thank you Thank you as well. Thanks to Procore for holding this. It's fun. Oh, of course. Yes. It was I great. I think Kel is going to stop. Um, sorry, Robbie's going to stop recording. I do want to.